in the shadows that uh, appear very differently uh, in the public arena. And what's come out so far is only one level of it. It goes much, much deeper. But even then, we're seeing how uh, what appears to be one thing in terms of what politicians uh, say and do is actually quite another behind the scenes. And it's, it's amusing in a way to me, uh, having had this whole label thrown uh, at me and others that do what I do, called conspiracy theorists or conspiracy theory by the mainstream media. Uh, a, a tag, by the way, uh, that came into widespread use uh, because the CIA urged American uh, corporate news outlets in the 1960s to use those terms to uh, discredit those who were quite rightly questioning the official narrative, the official story of the Kennedy assassination and that of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X and Bobby Kennedy. And all these decades later, all over the world, I see it all over the world, uh, journalists today or mainstream uh, journalists uh, are using the same terms to discredit anybody and label anybody who's doing the job that they should be doing, but don't. And so as these uh, leaks come out, not least about Hillary Clinton, uh, we can see how politics and the system works, even on that level um, just below the surface. Like I say, it goes phenomenally deeper than that. So we are seeing how um, the news and uh, the reporting of candidates, like favoured candidates like uh, Hillary Clinton, is orchestrated by what should be an independent questioning everything questioning both candidates' media. Uh, but of course, it's owned by uh, corporate interests and the corporate interests want to choose the candidate uh, that uh, suits their interests ongoing uh, more favourably. Uh, there's also an agenda for the world, which I've been, goodness knows, uh, exposing for so long, that uh, requires candidates to be put in there as presidents and prime ministers and, and, and other positions that are going to uh, either uh, push that agenda forward because they believe in it or because uh, they don't know what's really going on and uh, are so compartmentalized in their knowledge of the bigger picture that they are uh, pushing things and introducing things without knowing the real big global significance of what they're doing. Either way, this hidden hand operating through corporate interests uh, wants uh, their people in power and thus will fund them and use their media to uh, support them and help them get into office as, um, as much as possible. And that's what we're seeing uh, in the United States now. It's not a, a question of uh, should it be Clinton or should it be Trump? It shouldn't be either of them. What we should be focusing on is the uh, corrupt, uh, extraordinarily ridiculous nature of a political system in a country of uh, well in excess of 320 million people that throws up these two horrific candidates for people to choose between. That's not choice. People say, oh, you've got to vote for the lesser of two evils. Well, the lesser of two evils is still evil. What kind of political system is that? And so we've uh, seen from these email leaks how the corporate media is working with the Clinton campaign to uh, put her in the best light. And that must be a difficult job to start with. Um, we're seeing um, in emails that uh, and in uh, private speeches to banks and corporate interests by Hillary Clinton. Uh, that have been made public now, but it's the last thing she wanted, that she's told them that she has um, a public and private position on everything. In other words, she lies. She tells the public one thing, but privately believes another and intends to do another if she gets into office. We're hearing this um, mantra 
from her, as usual. We must bring Wall Street under control. While privately, she's uh, telling Wall Street the opposite. We have um, emails and uh, um, communications confirming that Hillary Clinton, as Secretary of State, knew that Saudi Arabia was uh, funding um, ISIS. Well, she would have known that anyway. But how come that if there's this fight against ISIS, that a ally of the United States and Britain, Saudi Arabia, is allowed to fund the very group that you're supposed to be fighting, while at the same time you provide uh, Saudi Arabia, both the US and Britain, with the weapons to cause absolute slaughter to civilians in Yemen. And what was Hillary Clinton's response to this knowledge that Saudi Arabia um, were funding ISIS? It was to take millions of dollars from the Saudi royal family for her deeply, deeply, deeply corrupt uh, Clinton uh, foundation. So we see all of these things. We see the fact that the uh, FBI and the Justice Department were colluding to protect Clinton from uh, prosecution over uh, what she did with classified emails while Secretary of State. And, but all this is, is covered up. And yet we still see this blind support for Clinton as we see the blind support for Trump on the other side. Um, and we get, we get this extraordinary situation where uh, women, or some women, some, some many women have sussed it, but where many women are saying she's, she's the candidate for, 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 for us, uh, she's the, going to be the first woman president. This is uh, someone who cares so much about the rights of women that she takes uh, millions and millions of dollars from the Saudi royal family whose treatment of uh, women is globally grotesque. And all this, what we're told, this is why elections are so ridiculous. Because all you get in elections is what the politicians think you want to hear, so you'll put them in office. They don't intend to do any of it. The vast majority of them don't anyway, especially the major ones. It's just a perception deception. The whole thing's a perception. Uh, deception. And now we have this um, situation where we are heading uh, faster and faster to a point where uh, a conflict between the United States and Russia could break out. That could lead to World War Three, which is what has been planned all along. And we see um, the uh, politicians of the you know, you're in to represent our interests type from the corporate uh, billionaires who are pushing now this agenda of uh, conflict with Russia. They're using terms like uh, we must have a no fly zone over um, Syria. And that doesn't mean a no fly zone. That means no one flies apart from the United States, uh, the UK and its uh, allies in NATO. Um, and if you uh, introduce a no-fly zone, then a conflict can break out um, any moment that uh, other people like the Russians or, or the Assad uh, military uh, put planes in the air. And we're, we're walking, well, not the people on the inside, they know what they're doing, but, but vast numbers of people are walking, like sleepwalking, into this, buying the official version of uh, what's going on. And just as that, you know, just not very deep level that we've seen of manipulation with regard to the Clinton emails, etc., um, if you go deeper, you find that level of the hidden hand that has wanted this uh, Third World War all along. 
and um, has been manipulating events to bring that about. But because we have uh, politicians who are uh, in on it, the few, and completely ignorant, the vast majority, we're having this um, ongoing uh, pressure now to bring in this uh, no-fly zone, which as uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at the Pentagon said recently, um, would um, involve war with Syria and Russia. And of course, then you've got the corporate media who are pushing the same line uh, of uh, it's all the Russians and systematically um, suppressing information, which you can get in the alternative media, that uh, children are dying all the time in the uh, Assad-controlled part of Aleppo as a result of uh, missiles being um, uh, dropped uh, from uh, uh, the, um, the terrorists in power in the other side of Aleppo. These missiles are coming across, killing children. Um, the pictures are there to be seen, but you don't see them in the mainstream media because the, the narrative is it's all the Russians and children are only dying in Aleppo um, in those areas being bombarded by um, Assad and Russian planes. We see um, anything that happens, like a, an aid convoy from the UN being hit. So it's immediately, it's the Russians. It, it, it's, it's shocking how blatant it is and how uh, few people can actually see it. And we um, have uh, a situation where left and right are being uh, manipulated in precisely the same way. We now have left and right uh, calling for uh, action against Russia, calling for uh, this uh, no-fly zone. We're having um, all these progressive organizations like Avaz and uh, the Syrian campaign, the White Helmets and all these other Western fronts uh, pushing the official narrative as well. We must do something about the Russians. We must have a no-fly zone. And this organization, uh, Avaz, um, was uh, pressing, one of the organizations pressing for a no-fly zone over Libya. Well, that worked out well, didn't it? Libya is now a basket case with enormous amounts of um, civilian death and suffering as a result of what happened. But no, let's forget that. Let's forget the fact that um, it wasn't the Russians that invaded uh, Iraq on a lie. It wasn't uh, the Russians that invaded uh, Libya on a lie and, and Syria via uh, it proxy uh, terrorist armies that are just fronts for the West. But no, left and right, now it's the Russians. And I'm not saying uh, Vladimir Putin is God's gift to the world. I'm not saying everything that Russia does is perfect. But what's happening here this demonization of Russia and, and, and this playing out that the, the, the Western powers that, that have created such death and mayhem in the world um, year after year after year are somehow the good guys in this John Wayne, good guy, bad guy uh, way of portraying the world. It's a nonsense. And if we don't start to see it and um, start to call up these uh, politicians for the nonsense they're... they're, they're um, they're talking, then we're going to find ourselves um, in another global conflict, purely through um, ignorance and buying the official story um, without question. Some of the most uninformed people you come across are people that uh, call themselves progressives because they get their official story via the progressive newspapers and the others get their official story by the other kind. Of newspapers with a different political line but it's the same basic narrative and so we have a, a situation where humanity has given its power away to such an extent that we have allowed psychopaths liars and complete idiots to take over the systems of government and military 
and finance and produce the world that we are living in, that we see on the television news every day. What are we doing? You know, it's no good. People saying, it's the politicians, it's the this, it's the that. Okay, so what are you doing? Oh, no, no, it's a good program on the telly tonight. Exactly. And when you give your power away because you can't be bothered, oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't think about politics. Well, don't complain then. And, 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 and when you, you have uh, people who will only get their information from the mainstream and not look elsewhere to see if the, if the uh, official stories uh, stand up, don't complain when you're scammed. And, you know, I, I saw a guy this week. His name's General Mark Milley. He's the, uh, the chief of staff of the U.S. Army. And if anyone wants confirmation of how humanity has given its power away to complete idiots, then they should watch this clip. This is um, the head of the U.S. Army um, talking like a playground bully, like a 10-year-old. And if a 10-year-old said it, you'd, you'd say to him, hey, at your age, don't be so silly. But this is the mentality that we have given power to and given um, power to them that could trigger World War Three. What are we doing? Have a look at this. I want to be clear to those who try to oppose the United States. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. I want to be clear to those around the world who want to destroy our way of life and that of our allies and friends. The United States military, despite all our challenges, despite our op-tempo, despite everything we've been doing, will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. That, that man, with that attitude and that John Wayne, we're the good guys, we're the big guys, we'll, we'll beat you. That barely one-dimensional, childlike view of the world it is an example of the kind of idiots that are running the military worldwide and uh, running uh, politics worldwide. Because this hidden hand is looking for two types of people to represent its interests and push on its agenda. One, those that are aware of what they're doing and now are in full support of it. Uh, they are the few, as I said earlier. And then the others who are basically uh, not very bright, here today, gone tomorrow people, um, never knowing the, the bigger picture and um, operating in a, in a tiny postage stamp of perception of everything. Well, you know, Millie, I rest my case. And this week in Britain, we had a, uh, a former Conservative Party minister called Andrew Mitchell. Um, calling uh, the Russian uh, or relating and likening the Russian um, uh, happenings in, um, in Syria as, um, as like the Nazis and like the fascists of, of Italy. And again, calling for a no-fly zone, which is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the United States has said, will mean war with Syria and with Russia. And Andrew Mitchell um, is someone who's been elected. Someone's, people have actually elected this man to Parliament to represent their interests. And um, he wants action against Russia that will clearly lead to an all-out conflict if that um, takes place. And while he's calling uh, uh, Russia and relating them to Nazis and, and uh, Italian fascists, all is forgotten about the grotesque, unspeakable mass killing and maiming of millions of civilians by this Mr. and Mrs. Evil 
of global geopolitics, Britain, America, and other NATO countries. And like I say, it's not just the, 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 the right, it's the so-called progressives, the so-called left, that are also supporting this ludicrous, blatantly uh, 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 made up uh, and contrived narrative in terms of um, we must stop the Russians. We must stop the Russians. Well, um, how come it was only when Russia came in that ISIS and these terrorist groups were pushed back across Syria? They weren't being, it wasn't being done before, even though the, 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 the Americans were bombing, uh, the, um, the British were bombing, others were bombing, and nothing was happening. Uh, the, the, the terrorists and ISIS were moving closer and closer to Damascus. Why? Because they weren't trying to stop them. This, this ISIS al Nusra uh, terrorist group under different names, actually controlled by the same force, um, is being used as a proxy army to remove Assad. And the Russians come in and do something about it. And, and, and suddenly they are, they are guilty of war crimes. Well, if, if they're guilty of war crimes, then what the heck are the West guilty of in Iraq, in Libya, in Syria and elsewhere? And then we've, we've got this, um, this lady, she's a, an opposition Labour Party MP called uh, Anne Cluid. And uh, she says uh, in a, a parliamentary debate this week, where is the rage? Where are the demonstrations that we've seen on so many previous occasions? I want to see, I challenge people listening to this debate, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million people outside the Russian embassy day after day. Uh, what about the US um, uh, embassy? How about the UK foreign office, which together contrived to bring about, as I've shown in, um, in detail elsewhere, contrived to bring about this uh, fake uprising in, uh, in Syria as simply a front to justify the removal of Assad. Why not uh, protest outside those centres of um, mass murder and cluid? Uh, and why not mention them? And Anne Cluid um, was a, uh, a staunch advocate of the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Um, a Rupert Murdoch newspaper uh, praised her for um, uh, swinging public opinion behind support for the war. And Tony Blair uh, made her special envoy on human rights in Iraq. If it wasn't so tragic, it'd be hilarious. And... Um, she was such a vehement supporter of the invasion of Iraq that despite the absolute catastrophe, uh, the human catastrophe, the uh, catastrophe in terms of what's gone on uh, as a result of that invasion in Iraq, she still says today that if she had the chance to vote again, she would vote for the invasion. It's extraordinary. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the people, left and right, who we have given our power to, to run this world. And that's why we have the world we do. And um, Boris Johnson, um, the Foreign Secretary, also called in that debate uh, for um, a demonstration in London against Russia at the um, at the Russian embassy and he could say that without a hint of shame when the UK and Britain are the world's biggest destroyers of human rights and peace in other countries and you know I look at these people who call themselves progressives I mean the, the biggest problem I, I see with progressives is they're not progressive they're just another arm of the state, what well, real thinking that they are actually um, challenging the state. And progressives are always talking about racism. But what about the racism of Western countries continually, one after the other, 
bombing and destroying countries that are um, home to people overwhelmingly with brown faces. What about that racism, that imposition of the, the Western will upon these countries so that you cannot have um, the, the, the leaders uh, that we say you can't have? You must have who we say you must have. It's, it's, it's extraordinarily um, obvious racist imperialism which the British Empire and, and now the American Empire has been using for centuries and imposing on the world. And it's all these progressives, oh look, you know, it's, it, it, my heart's on my sleeve, you know, I'm a progressive, I'm ever so good, I am. And they talk about racism all the time, but then ignore the extraordinary racism that's going on year after year uh, in the Middle East. And, you know, We have um, a situation where it's got so laughable that the US State Department's uh, spokesman, a guy called John Kirby, uh, can be asked about the mass killing of civilians and children in Yemen by a Saudi Arabia armed uh, by the United States and Britain. And he can say that's not the same as what's happening in Syria with Russia. The narrative that everyone is pushing and left and right are just following like sheep is that we demonize Russia because we want to go to war with them and we want to justify going to war with them. But we also want Saudi Arabia to be bombing Yemen. So therefore, it's not the same because one narrative suits us and the other narrative of um, it's not the same suits us. In fact, they're both uh, grotesque. What is happening and what has happened all these years in Syria, what is happening now in Yemen are both equally grotesque. And that's what people with, with balance, people who really cared about justice and freedom and peace would be saying. But they're not. The people in power are not saying that. They're not seeing that both those things are the same. Because one suits them and one doesn't. Why? Because there is a hidden hand with a hidden agenda pushing what suits it all the time. And that's why there's so many, uh, apparently so many contradictions in what these people say about different situations. But there's no contradiction in their mind because they'll support what suits the agenda and they'll oppose what doesn't suit the agenda. It's that simple. And if people can't see it now, well, there's no hope for them really because it's never been so blatant what's going on. And the fact that um, these countries in the Middle East, like uh, Iraq, Libya, Syria, were on a list before 9-11. Um, 9-11 um, was the trigger to start picking that list off. And it's still going on. But we're asked to believe it's all random and it's all happening by uh, random choice and by accident. It's not. The human race has given its power away to psychopaths, liars, and idiots. And unless we decide to take it back and stop being uh, programmed in our perceptions by those people, then they will lead this world to utter global catastrophe. I wonder what's on the telly tonight.